<clears throat> Hello, and welcome to a very late video. I haven't done a video for a while, and I apologize for that. Uh, life got out of hand. Things got kind of kind of busy. And so, this is the first time in a few weeks I've had a chance to actually put together a video. And I'm excited about this one. This one I've been sitting on for a while. I got another iPod 3rd Gen in the mail some time ago. And I am very, very pleased about that. I am very fond of this generation, as you may be aware. I've done videos about this one in the past. Uh, I put it together, I, I replaced the battery, tried to fix it, and it doesn't work. It still doesn't work. It did work for a while, but for some reason it won't take a charge whatsoever. Uh, so I'm sorry about that. And we're going to reopen it and look inside, and uh, possibly take components out of this one and put them into this one, which does actually start up. I uh, had a very pleasant surprise where I plugged this one in to see quickly what would happen and it turned on. It, it, it started to charge. This, this one here I got off of eBay as is untested for parts. It was the heading. And um, and much to my pleasure, when I plugged it in using a firewire cable and a wall wart, it uh, immediately responded. It took a minute or two to sort of wake up, as it were, but it did respond. And it now it does show a file folder with an exclamation point, which suggests to me that the hard drive is dead. And when I look at certain angles, there is a discoloration up here, which is not present in the other iPod 3rd gen. In fact, the screen is a different color, to be honest with you. This one's an amber color, and this one is a gray color. So I find that curious as well. And on the back, They both have the same date, 2003, and pretty much all the same markings, except that this one has Merry Xmas, Miss, you know, somebody's name, God bless, love, mommy, <laughs> which is cute. And this one has 20 gigabytes, and this one's a 10 gigabyte. So, sadly, the 20 gigabyte model is, the hard drive seems to be dead, or the cable's disconnected, maybe. That could be a nice fix. This one, the hard drive and everything else doesn't seem to work. However, the battery in this one's brand new. The battery in this one I suspect is original. There's no evidence of it having been opened at all. So I'm thinking this is the original battery, which is why there's a bit of discoloration because the battery's distended. That's too bad. So we'll have to replace this battery with the battery from this one. Possibly replace this hard drive with the hard drive from this one. Maybe even if I can't get this pink off, because <laughs> it's pink. Well, I don't mind the pink. Pink's a bit of history on it. But if I can't get that pink off, maybe even replace some components from this one onto this one. And make a Frankenstein iPod 3rd gen. Either way, let's get into it. I will lock this one. Lock this one. And we will start. Let's open up this. This is the old one, the 10 gigabyte flavor. We tried to fix it some time ago. I'll get my trusty dull blade out. And let's do it.
There we go. Make sure I'm still in frame. There we are. And there's the old iPod. Now, I'm going to take out this battery, for sure, and put it into this iPod here. We're going to also put this aside for now, and that may become a donor for her other iPod 3s if I end up getting iPod 3s. So let's now try to open this one, which works almost. Quite worn out. Somebody really used this one a very great deal. Oh, it's nice. It's nice to see. And this one does not look like it's ever been opened. I really don't see any... I see signs of use, signs of glue. There's like a glue on this. So that's fun. I don't see any signs of much else. Now one thing I do like about these old iPods is they carry the history of the people who used them. And that, to me, is a lot of fun. So it's a lot of fun. You can try to read some of that history. Like this one has pink on it. It says something about the previous user. It also has something similar to glue on it. I'm not really sure what that is. It's crusty and, and, and pretty aggressive. Actually, that's a huge gouge along the side. That's a lot. That's a huge gouge. So somebody's scratched this pretty hard against something. Get in there. That actually might be a good sign. I may pause the camera and try to open this off camera. Oh, there we go. Actually thinking this would never opened, not since the factory. Okay, so here's what I see. Green copper oxidation right there. Something's got in here. A liquid. But other than that, I don't see any sign of anything going on that is negative. I don't see corrosion. I mean, that's a bit of a concern, but... I don't see any more, much more corrosion than that. So let's take this apart and disconnect the battery.
There we go. Now we can work freely without worrying about a short. Now this is the hard drive. So I just took the hard drive out of the old one and it came out very easy. And I'm looking at the battery in the old one. Looks fine to me. And I'm looking at the hard drive in the new one. And I'm trying to lift it up without damaging anything because this thing is stiff. Very rigid. I don't want to break anything. My battery's gunked to it. There we go. Now, the reason I suspect the hard drive on this one is cooked is because it does try to spindle up, and I can hear it going. It makes a sound which is like a shit, shit, shit sound like that. So it's getting a signal. It's getting a signal from the 30-pin connector to engage the hard drive, but then it's not engaging properly, if you understand. Whereas this one, it seemed to engage just fine. Now, sadly, this is a 10 gigabyte hard drive right here. This is not a 20 gig. Yep, 10 gigabyte hard drive. So I will transfer this to here and then take this one and maybe just put it in here just to keep it stored somewhere. So let's try to do that. And if you look at how this one was attached, the connector is down in this corner. So we're going to see if we can, and it just comes out as a unit. So we're going to see if we can do that over here without causing damage. I mean, I could just undo the cable, I suppose. Little hair. Here's the old hard drive. A 20 gig flavor. Now I am being extremely careful with this because um, I don't want to do unnecessary damage to it. So I was trying to pull the hard drive off the ribbon, which I did. And I put it there. And I'm going to try to lift this out carefully. in a film as well, which is very thick. Now this is the old battery.
here. And I'm not sure what to do with it because it looks perfectly fine. It looks brand new. This battery looks perfectly fine. And this is the original 2003 battery according to the markings. And this battery is the one I was thinking of replacing it with, which is the one I just bought. And it also looks perfectly fine. I mean, it's brand new. I think it's new old stock, actually. Um, which may or may not be a good thing. If it's new old stock, I'm taking it apart off screen, so I apologize. But if it's new old stock, then is it really any good, is my question. If this original battery works, and it doesn't look distended at all, and I was misunderstanding what I was seeing on the screen, then, you know, what's, what's the concern? Because, sorry, I'm taking a look at the old one here. I may just end up using that battery. That's the factory battery and isn't distended in any way. It's sticky, it's covered in something very sticky, but it's not distended. And it looks almost brand new. But it says right on it, 2003. So that puzzles me. And I'm not gonna take out, I was gonna take out the ribbon cable connecting the hard drive to the uh, iPod, but I'm going to leave that because I don't want to do anything unnecessary. I'll only change that if I absolutely have to. So for now, let's just keep the old cable in there and we will remove this unit's connector. Put it back there. Take that off. And substitute a 10 gigabyte here. And put the shield back on because I think this must be a shield. The other reason I'm using the original battery is because for some reason this battery has a very thick long cable and it's more frustrating than I like because I have to run it around the screw and stuff like that. Whereas this one is much easier to use because it is the original, it was in here already and it fits perfectly. And this hard drive goes like this and there's a tab here a plastic tab 
that guides the hard drive on. And it's really, it really makes it a lot easier than the newer hard drives, which are, I think, custom made for the iPods or something. This is a standard off-the-shelf hard drive by the looks of it. Right, the battery died. Surprise, surprise. Now, here is the iPod with this iPod's hard drive in it. The original battery, because that seemed to work fine. Uh, eventually, what I might do is take the screen or the display off of this one, or the front, the entire front assembly off of this one, maybe, and put it on top of this. For now, I'm going to call this a win, however, and leave things well enough alone. If I can't get the pink off. Uh, this case seems to be a little less scratched and stained than this case, so we'll do a swap. But now let's turn it on and see what happens. I may need to plug it in and recharge the battery. Just gonna look at the pin connector here. Looks good to me. So let's get let's give this a quick plug in. And a quick reminder that it's okay. Let's give it a quick plug in. And a quick charge. Oh. There we go. Response to the plug. And it's lighting up, and we have an iPod. It's clicking. Okay, so now the face is not working. So it does light up. And it's registering is locked all the time. So something has happened where now it is registered as because <laughs> I have the switch over here. That's why. There we go. <laughs> That's right. I'm turning the switch on the case, but the switch is actually on the face. So I'm doing nothing over here. That's what's happening. Uh, yeah, okay. So now we have a working iPod, third gen, with the wrong hard drive, but that is really cool. And the display is pretty uh, pretty funky, it's got all kinds of lighting issues. So over the next while, maybe we will replace that. Now what music do they have on here? Artists. Kanye West, 98 degrees. Aliyah, ba Black Eyed Peas, Coolio, Dark Latin Groove, Fat Joe, Freeway, Kanye West again, somebody really likes Kanye West, Lil, Lil Wayne, Limp Biscuit. oh yeah, 
Mario, Missy Elliott, Tupac. Hmm. Unknown has in it DLG. Uh, how do I go back? So there you go, folks. Audio CD, unknown artist, Jay Z, Joe Budin, Buster Rhymes, Lil John, P Diddy Diddy. Somebody liked hip hop a lot. Jay Z, Jada Kiss, and unknown artist again. But folks, we have a good iPod. So there we go. No, I didn't want to do that. Extras. What are in, in the extras? Clock contact games. What games did they have on the, on the third gen? You had Brick, Music Quiz, Parachute, and Solitaire. What notes are on here? To view text files. Nothing new. Calendar, to do, nothing, keep wanting to use this like the newer iPods, contacts, settings, what settings can you change, an equalizer, cool, my fifth gen I don't think had an equalizer at all, very cool. So I may have fun playing with this now. The battery is dying fast. Okay, so the battery is running low quickly. What should I do about that? Yeah, I'm watching the battery go down visibly. The little battery ticker is just going... How do you turn it off? Yeah. So there we are, folks. We do have a working iPod. I'm quite happy with that. 9.2 gigs free. A thousand songs. And it's formatted for Windows. Version 2.3 of the software. Yeah. So there we are. Jazzy's Bab is what it's called. Well, if you're watching this video, your iPod's working. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, you know what? Actually, one more thing. Let's replace the battery. Hello. Camera turned off. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and replace the battery. Um, I had to research a few things and the camera ended up shutting off. I wanted to make sure I didn't damage anything here, so um, now that I can be sure of that, I can go ahead and try to replace it with this battery. Because this battery drains really quickly, even though it looks fine and it does charge a bit. It ends up draining.
take this out. Try to stick this wire down. I have to say, this board does look really nice. I like the design on this board. It's quite nice. And this one has less corrosion. That crystal sink um, is not corroded like it is in that one. Actually, if I do a quick comparison... Yeah, generally speaking, this looks like a cleaner board, even though there's a lot of um, green from the copper. Don't want to do any damage, of course. That's going to be tricky. Because these wires are a fair bit thicker than the last one. And a bit longer. So I don't know what's up with that. Because otherwise the battery looks authentic. I really, really don't understand that. So I had to run, on the other iPod, I had to run these wires along and over. Whereas this one, i got to figure this out now. I had to run them around the screw, which I didn't like doing because that's not the way it's supposed to be done. There you have it. And here's the hard drive with the shield. This is the correct hard drive. Yep. That'd be <laughs> amusing if I put the old hard drive back in and then wondered why it wasn't working. And then I'd think I broke something and then so on and so on. So let's try it like this. Put the screw in. So now, got the battery, got the 10 gigabyte hard drive. Let's try to charge it. See if we'll hold a charge now. And being the way it is, it's pretty dead but we will give it a go because that battery was drained thoroughly booting up sounds good and it lights up 
and it's charging the battery. The extremely dead battery. So there we have it, folks. A restored iPod 3rd gen. And there we are. It's closed. Still recording? Yep. It's a closed iPod. Let's plug it in. See if it charges. See if anything went weird. So I find it really quite appealing because it's an odd step in the road to the newer i iPods. It, it went from the the click wheel with the buttons on the side of the first and second gen to this gen which has the buttons on top to eventually everything incorporated in the click wheel. And so this is a bit of a weird sidestep and I'm very fond of it because of that. Um, my goal now is to try to get um, a second gen or a first gen. Second gens are expensive, uh, first gens are very expensive and second gens you can find in time for a reasonable price still and maybe I could get a seventh gen which is very similar to this but with a solid state drive so that's my next two iPods to get to repair and to put on display um, as it is what I'm going to do is put a little shelf on my wall here and all of my iPods that are working and not working will be on display from early to late generation and that will be in the near future. Uh, down the road in the longer future this will need to be addressed again because even though it charges, even though it sort of works, I cannot sync the hard drive. It won't work for that. And so the 30 pin connector never quite connected to the motherboard properly. There's one pin I knew was not connecting properly and I'm not sure what to do about that because the pad is altogether gone. It just was corroded right off, or something. All the other pads are connected, and this is connected to them. The pins are all connected, but something's not syncing. Um, then after that, or before that, depending on time frame, we have an iPod 4th Gen. And this one... Um, will uh, not charge properly either. And so this might be the next video. We may open this up and take a look inside and see what's going on with this one. And frankly, if this uses the same hard drive as this, this is a 20 gigabyte hard drive, maybe we'll put this back to being a 20 gigabyte hard drive from this one. We'll see. We'll take a look inside. It uses the same connector on top. You see here, they look the same from on top. don't know if you can see that. So they're the same on top. They might be very similar internally, and the only difference might actually be because the display even looks the same. If you look at the two displays, they look very much the same. The only difference really seems to be this actually has a button, and this has this. So it might be that there's only surface differences. Internally, they may be very similar. That would be interesting. So we will explore that soon. That will be that will be maybe next week. Maybe we'll explore that next week. That, that's a neat project. They look almost exactly the same. Same display by the looks of it. Just maybe the outside. So that's interesting. Let's do that. Anyways, thank you for tuning in. Tune again next week, where we will explore these two. And... Yeah, comment down below, let me know what you thought of the repair, 
and um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Take care, and thank you for watching.